Warning, Gory Storytime is a horror movie review show by a son and his dad who thought that letting his five-year-old watch scary movies was acceptable. If you are offended by horror or talk about blood and gore by a child, or if you don't want horror movies from the 60s through today spoiled, then there is a remote stuck in your couch cushion next to potato chip crumbs. Use it. And of course, parental discretion is advised. Why? You didn't use any. Shut up and start the show. Story time. I'm your host, Jason. I'm his co-host and his father, Craig. And uh, this is the show where my son, who is 17 now, but started the show at 13, reviews R-rated horror movies with his father, basically. Um, we've both been huge fans of the horror movie genre. And I'm excited because this week we're really delving into what I wanted this show to be at times. Because... We've done, you know, the classic characters of Freddy and, and Jason, Jason and, and Chucky. And... But, and we've done like the high quality things like um, the Silence of the Lambs and Shining, right? Uh, we've done some of the uh, psychological stuff like Saw and <clears throat> Seven. And then <clears throat> we even got into things like, I'm um, trying to think of a good example. Well, we did some Stephen King movies. We've, we've done, done, you know, uh, but what we really haven't delved sorts. into, you know, we've done the ones that like started a genre, Blair, which wasn't the first found footage, but it was the first real big takeover film, you know, as far For as Main industry. Street. Right. Um, but what we haven't hit is there was a period from the late 70s to maybe the mid, mid to, to late, late 80s. 80s of just schlocky people getting, excuse me, decapitated. And diced up. The, diced up. It was a gore fest, splatter fest, barely having a reason to exist, like what the mm. plot point was that made this happen. But they're just like fun popcorn sit back and just watch how <clears throat> for whatever reason this killer tortures and mutilates it the people and, and if you're us laugh hysterically oh yeah absolutely so this is the genre we're going to hit for like maybe the next four and mm -hmm. i want to give a shout out to my sister jessica yep. um jessica johnson she uh she posted the, posted a poster from of, this movie of this, and I was like, "Oh, that, I forgot. Yeah, why don't we do that?" And then she's and gonna she, help us with the next couple that we're doing. Yeah, she gave us a list of exactly this genre of horror movie. Just you know, it's, it's what we need. It's the uh, you know killer tomatoes of horror movies. It's the toxic avenger of horror movies. It's that kind of B movie. Not necessarily straight to video, but just like blood and gore. Not, you know, you've never heard of any of these actors. You'll never hear of them again, but just. They may look like someone. You, you just get in there and you just eat your popcorn and you laugh and you have a good time. And only two things are guaranteed. There's going to be a lot of blood and whoever doesn't have sex will get away. Yeah. That's pretty much the only rules for these 80s horror movies that I'm referring to. Oh, yeah. So let's get into this one. Um, before we go any farther, uh, here's the basic plot of this one. So Kid accidentally kills his mom. He's For his dad's birthday, he's cleaning his dad's guns. Gun yeah. goes off. His mom ends up dead. Dad comes home, beats him. Flash, you know, flash forward. Flash forward like 20 years. Um, no, nah, even say maybe fifteen. Fifteen years, and and is that, that kid has taken his, his friends, friends to the beach house, and, and someone starts them. Oh, and someone is killing them. You're not supposed to know that it's his dad, but okay. Are you not? No. Spoiler alert. Here's the end of the movie. Spoiler alert. Here's that. I know, thing but you, you don't start out. with the end. I said give a rough outline. That's not where the spoilers come. The spoilers come when we give the facts and. Do you, have you, is this your first episode? Oh wait, no, it's the 85th. 
Or more, who knows? Well, it says 85, not counting the Vitalist Bridge movie. Mm -hmm. And whichever episode. numbers we accidentally doubled since then. <sighs> anyway. Roll that trailer. Roll the trailer. What do you say? Four days of R&R &R at the beach. I'm in. She's in. I'm in. Sounds good to me. I got a bad feeling about this. They thought their vacation would be fun. They were wrong. Dead wrong. He's what's called a trophy hunter. Bum, 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 bum. Dad used to tell me that he'd hunted everything but man. Hey. Fall break, it looks good, huh? Yeah, well, we'll get into that. But before we get into the behind the scenes information about this movie, we have to give a shout out to our sponsors. Because as Even you with know- movies like this, we have sponsors. Yes, no matter what movie, we we tend to find two sponsors every single week. And they're never the same sponsors twice. Odd. I know. None of them are impressed with our reads enough to come back, I guess. <clears throat> so this week, Gory Storytime is brought to you by The Lame Name Game. The game that tests your knowledge of what things were called before the name you now know. Example, what was the original name for Pepsi Cola? If you're saying bad Coke, while technically you are correct, it's not the answer we're looking for. Um, the real answer is called Brad's Drink, and that's actually what Pepsi was called originally. So. If you know what your favorite movies, shows, games, and more were called when they were first named, then the Lame Name Game is for you. That's the Lame Name Game. Mention Blue Harvest for 10% off. Hmm. I like that. Did you get that? Yes, I okay. did. And by Tools and Weapon Dad's Tools and Weapons, uh, the store for enthusiasts of home improvement, work, and deadly weaponry. If you're looking for a one-stop shop for socket wrenches and machetes, or if you're looking for a measuring tape and a battle axe, come to Dad's, Dad's Tools and Weapons. Yeah. Mention FSJWs, receive the free packet, uh, pocket knife only at Dad's Tools and Weapons. Yeah, if you mention FSJWs, you get a free pocket knife. I like it. Anyway. <clears throat> So, uh, you want to go first, or you want me to? I guess you can. All right. In the script, Big Ed was supposed to be killed when he's ripped in two by a turnstile bridge, but the stunt was deemed too dangerous, and the death scene was rewritten. Mm. <clears throat> the film was released theatrically in two versions, first unrated, and later an R-rated version. Which is weird that they would do the unrated first in 1984. Like, yeah. They weren't really doing a lot of unrated stuff, but... Whatever. Um, the movie's original title was Fall Break, but it was changed to The Mutilator for its video release for marketing reasons. You know, marketing reasons, like people looking for a horror movie go, The Mutilator sounds more badass than Fall, Fall break. break. Right. Which, by the way, isn't a thing. There's spring break. But fall is when you're first going back to school, so you don't need a break yet. You're just going back. You just came off of summer break. There is no fall break. True. 
<laughs> yeah, okay. Because it uh, wasn't like it was Thanksgiving break, which is its own thing and not technically fall break. So During fall. It is, but it's not called. Maybe, maybe that's what they were going for. Except Who knows? I watched the movie with maybe you. Maybe it was April. No. And they just have April different... isn't fall. Maybe. <laughs> okay, according to the director, <coughs> Buddy Cooper, the car, fe the car featured in the movie was sold shortly after production a production wrapped and wrecked by the new owner about three days later. Oh, my. There's a director, ca director cameo, speaking of Buddy Cooper. He plays the bloodied man in the photograph in Big Ed's trophy room. Remember the yeah. one that they're like, it was an accident. Yeah, he hit him with a boat. That, that was the, uh, yeah, what did you think they said? I thought, it, uh, what, he said ski boat or something like that. Yeah. But what I thought he said was skateboard. And Which I was wouldn't like, have made what? much sense for how much blood there was. I hit him on a skateboard. <laughs> Oops. Anyway. Okay, then. Uh, writer slash director Buddy Cooper kept a lot of the props used in this film. Bill Hitchcock was last cast, uh, cast at the last minute, sorry, as Ralph. <clears throat> okay. Uh, milk was poured into the swimming pool to make the water more cloudy. Yeah. Well, you notice strange. It, which is why you're like, how can they not? How could the, he not see the person that's also in the pool? Because it was cloudy from milk. Milk. I don't know. What? That, um, <laughs> Pamela Weddle Cooper stepped in at the last minute to play the mother in the opening scene after the original actress cast. Decided not to play said part for religious reasons. Okay, hold on. Wait. They showed a little bit of it in the trailer. Right. If you are, I, I'm a religious person. I am. And you're right. a religious person. But if you're reading Signing a horror movie horror script, horror movie. well, if you read the script and it's like you have to be shot in the back accidentally, first of all, that's the least horrible thing that happens in this movie. Right. And you read the script, you signed on, and then your religion made you... No, like, your religion should come into play when you decide to take or not to take said part. Right. But anyway, what do I know? Okay. Uh, this movie was shot in 29 days. And it seems like they rushed it in half that. Oh, yeah. Um, this film was shot in chronological order. We've said that with about a couple of movies, but it's not usually the case, you know? They mm. usually shoot all... The, you know, if there's like a... Beach house, they'll shoot all the beach house scenes if there's, you know, whatever. Right, because it makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ruth Martinez was still in college when she acted in this film. Now, I took it as these people were supposed to be just out of high school starting college, which is funny because um, they always pick people that are like in their mid to late 20s to play like high school students. Beverly Hills 90210 was a TV show back in the day that, you know, the big joke was, like, there wasn't anyone playing these high school kids for four years that weren't in their 20s when they started. And then there was one that they, were, they always used to make fun of because she looked like she was, like, 40. Oh, goodness. Yeah. I never watched it, but your grandmother did, and... Mm, I don't know. Uh, anyway. I uh, my did. turn. Uh, the climax was shot in a single night. <laughs> that is what she said. Uh, Linda was originally supposed to be killed with a spear gun. <clears throat> and there was a documentary about the mutilator that was, came out in 2016 called Fall Break, The Making of the Mutilator. So at some point we have to find that because that would give us more behind the scenes information than, you know, where this. we usually get it. Right, okay. We've only, we're uh, a little shy this week. Uh, the death count was seven. Yeah, there was seven and we never found that looking it up. We literally went... This one, this one, this one, this one, this one. These two live. Yeah, we this had to one. count. Yeah. And that's counting... The mom at the beginning. Yeah. And, and the killer. Right. That's totally not the dad. <laughs> anyway, uh, <clears throat> the Rotten Tomato scores, we like to give these. Um, the audience has this movie at approximately 25%. No, it was exactly that. Okay. And... Uh, <laughs> The Rotten Tomato score for the critics is, well, they didn't even review this piece of art. Yes, which is weird because, you know... This was such an amazing... Piece of art. Well put together, film. well written I wouldn't call it a film. movie. I would call it a film. Right. Anyway, so what was your... Uh, 
least favorite scene? Uh, okay. I guess my least favorite was, now looking back at it, not knowing what I was getting myself into. What do you mean? Because when you said we were going for a bunch of those bloody cut em up movies, I thought it was going to be like, well done. No. I didn't realize they were doing bad on purpose. They weren't doing it on purpose. They were doing it on a shoestring budget. Oh, well, then never if mind. If we filmed our own R-rated horror movie, like, using, you know, the if I wrote we the have. script, well, using, like, these guys to, like, film it for this station, which would be awesome, actually, do you realize the budget would be so low? I mean, they did a really good job with the Vilas Bridge one. Right. They did. But they also didn't have, like, you know, horror movie special effects. High end. For, well, actually, they had quite a bit of special effects with the ghost girl right. and all that stuff. But the point is... It's not what we have yeah, Hollywood, yeah. Hollywood has You have now. to realize what they had for a budget. That's the thing. Right. You know? Like, I have ideas that would be cool for a horror thing to do through here. The fact of the matter is, like, we couldn't expect, you know, Hollywood quality... Oh, no. Uh, when it comes to the special effects, just because, and okay. that's what this was. This was like little companies going, we can make some quick cash if we put out this bloody film. And you know, the okay. special effects. you know what? My least favorite Plus, this was, was not that then. Because my least favorite was after mm, 10 minutes of the movie, maybe even 15 minutes of the movie is when the title card comes on. And it's not even what I thought I was watching. Yeah, it popped up and said fall break. And you were like, but I thought this was the mutilator. And I said, check IMDb. And it's like, IMDb, type in fall break. And it pops up, the mutilator? Because even IMDb goes, we know what it is. But yeah. Because <clears throat> we were almost 20 minutes into the movie when suddenly. It wasn't 20 minutes into the movie. It was like a good 15 minutes into the movie. Yeah, it was like maybe eight or nine. I don't know about yeah. that. Yeah, anyway. Watch that, it. It's not on YouTube. Um, doesn't matter. It's not on YouTube. Right. Cause it's not on YouTube for free. That's not how we watched it. We purchased an official Blu-ray of this. Right. Because they have a Blu-ray of this. They actually probably do if they have the documentary. It probably went, came with the documentary. Yeah, it's probably like a two-thing, you know, two-pack or something. I don't know. Tupac? No, not Tupac, two-pack. Um, anyway, my least favorite scene was probably the shot with the uh, decapitation. Oh, <laughs> Because yeah. I get that they were doing practical effects in 1984 on a shoestring budget, but my God, don't zoom in on the fake <laughs> head that's rolling on the ground. Like, if you know that your head doesn't look that accurate, maybe don't zoom in on it and be like, hey, look at our really cr plastic, crappy fake face head. thing. Um, so, yeah, that would be my least favorite. Okay, my favorite would have to be, I don't know the character's name because they were really good at that, uh, but the one who has to go out and find the two that are already dead at this point. I don't know Which their part? names either, yeah, but okay. he got spiked through the neck with a uh, pitchfork. pitchfork. Yes. And it was amazing. And it looked pretty cool. It looked less fake than everything else. Okay. And I really liked it. Um, my favorite scene, you were awfully disturbed when the girl was oh, yeah. put down on the bench and the man pulled out that, that hook thing. and decided to... Use her as fishing, fishing bait. bait? <laughs> and he just hooked her right through, you know, um, her lower parts. Abdominal area. Yeah. Through jeans, which is funny because, like, they show it and, like, there she is, like, I don't think that's supposed to be underwear. I think it's supposed to be, like, a swimsuit. But that's not accurate to, she was wearing jeans in the scene, you know? But it... <laughs> it was disturbing enough and realistic enough that and I it went... It made me yeah, cringe good. just because, like... That was uncalled for. Oh, yeah. He, you didn't need to do... You could have just cut her head off like you did the other guys. Like, what yeah, is but this? He's the mutilator. Like, he's got to come up with different ways to mutilate. If he just does the same thing every time, he would be like the head chopper, you know? He's, no. He no. doesn't want to be, you know, stuck in one or genre Or at one point, he's murder. torso man. But, you know. He just, you know, I don't know. I think he wanted to earn the name the mutilator by mutilating many ways. Uh, anyway, so if you had to rate this on a scale of 1 to 10. Now, this is going to be a little different. Um, 
we're not gonna rate this the way we do all of our movies, even though it's gonna be on a one to 10. We're gonna do one to 10 for this specific genre of horror movies. Right. Because it's its own thing. It wouldn't be fair, for example, to, you know, if you like the trauma movies and the Toxic Avenger, that type of stuff, to compare that to Oscar winning movies or like on, any a, on the same the, scale because it's, it's a different thing. Right. You know, it's kind of like boxed mac and cheese. You can love it, but it's not the same as homemade mac and cheese. And to compare the two is just not fair. They're so different from one another. Right. It doesn't make sense. So we're doing a scale of one to 10 for the specific genre of low budget. <clears throat> slasher flick, flick from, like, the 80s. Right. So, for that, that being the genre, on a scale of 1 that, to 10, what And for say? the sake that it kept me laughing the whole time, I'm going to give it a 7. A 7? All right. You know, I'm going to go probably and follow you with a 7. Um, for that specific genre of film, it does what it needs to well, do. Well, and it was wicked fun the whole time. Mm-hmm. And it kept me laughing. Like, I guess... I had, if I had to say, did I enjoy it? Yes, yes, I did. It, it was up there. Yeah, and for th- this, there was jokes that we m- got to make, and you know, it, again, it's like that. Go watch it, eat popcorn, and just have a good time. Horrible. Mock it viciously while you're watching it. Absolutely, it's absolutely That's, hilarious, and it's amazing. Yeah, it's perfect for that. So, um, yeah, seven and seven. All right, um, and seven. And anyway. we each had seven. Okay. Anyway. So, so that's, about it, that's right? our wrap up time. Yep. We uh, we have this. Now, tell them. Oh, um, you can watch our show, Gory Story Time, Friday on s- at seven p.m. and Thursday at eight thirty p.m. Mm-hmm. Okay. Or you can. Uh, watch our show on their YouTube channel that I'm not quite sure what the name is. You just look for Fact TV, Fact I TV? believe. Yeah. I, I, Fact TV on YouTube? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. And then, uh, the, or you could follow. Or you could go to fact8.com. Oh, fact8.com. You could find a bunch of TV shows yep. there. Um, you could follow Fact TV on Facebook, like their page. They post a bunch of episodes and a bunch of their own stuff. Uh, you could go and like our page. Gory Story Time, just search for that on Facebook. We're supposed to post memes and stuff, and we share links. Got to start doing more of that. But. Yeah. Um, we have our own email. That's Gory Story Time at Yahoo.com. Yep. Um, um, we got our uh, personal uh, accounts for Twitter. Your. I'm Jason T. Jakes. Capital J, capital T, capital J. I'm at Craig Jakes, all lowercase, all one word. We and we don't talk about, about the show. show. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but that's about it, I would say, for this week, right? Yeah. So uh, until next time, I'm your host, Jason. I'm his co-host and his father, Craig. And sweet, sweet dreams. dreams.